Welcome to the FAGI Still Image Video Series. This video will explore concepts and best practices described in the third edition of the FAGI Technical Guidelines for Digitizing Cultural Heritage Materials. For the full guidelines document and additional resources, please visit digitizationguidelines.gov. In this video, we'll walk through the basics of setting up a workstation for digitizing cultural heritage material. Camera-based workstations provide a great deal of control over image quality since a variety of lenses, lights, and camera bodies can be chosen to meet budgetary or programmatic needs. A camera-based workstation is made up of five core components. The camera, the lens, the copy stand, the lights, the target. The camera's sensor is what records the image of the object being digitized. Images are captured in fractions of a second and are either saved to a memory card or, using software and a tether cable, directly to a computer. A benefit of tethering is being able to see the images on a monitor in real time as you work. You may have heard the term PPI, or pixels per inch. This is sampling frequency a measure of how many pixels of the camera's sensor cover an inch of the object in a single dimension. The camera's sensor resolution, measured in megapixels, is one factor that affects the sampling frequency of the digital image. The capture area of a high megapixel camera is larger than that of a lower megapixel camera. For example, a 50 megapixel camera will be able to capture a larger area at 300 ppi in a single image than a 36 megapixel camera. The lens is an essential component of any camera-based workstation. When choosing a lens for cultural heritage imaging, there are a number of factors to consider. A good quality lens with a flat plane of focus and low distortion will help maintain edge-to-edge -edge sharpness and ensure fine details are sufficiently resolved. Lenses with a fixed focal length are preferable for cultural heritage imaging workstations because zoom lenses are more likely to drift when pointed down. Additionally, a normal focal length lens is preferred for most work over specialized lenses designed for wide angle, telephoto, or macro work. A normal focal length lens has approximately the same angle of view as the human eye. For reference, Normal focal lengths for popular sensor formats are as follows. An APS-C format sensor has a normal focal length of 35 millimeters. For full frame sensors, it's 50 millimeters. For medium format, it's 70 to 80 millimeters. The choice of lens impacts a variety of FAGI still image measurement parameters, including sampling frequency, spatial frequency response, color channel misregistration, geometric distortion, and lightness uniformity. These terms will be explored in future videos. A copy stand has three core components, the platform, the column, and the camera mount. When combined, these components support the camera and the object during imaging. A workstation can be set to achieve a higher or lower sampling frequency by adjusting the camera's height on the column. Sampling frequency decreases when the camera is positioned higher on the column because it's farther away from the object. However, when the camera is positioned higher, the area that the camera can capture increases. This area is called the field of view. Conversely, sampling frequency increases as the camera is positioned lower on the column. As sampling frequency increases, the field of view decreases because the camera is closer to the object. Therefore, objects of wide-ranging sizes can be digitized on a copy stand with a tall column as compared to one with a shorter column. If you are digitizing large objects, make sure the copy stand platform is large enough to accommodate and can support the object safely. When setting up the copy stand, be mindful of its stability. If the copy stand is a tabletop version, make sure it is on a sturdy table. Wobble, shake, or vibration anywhere in the physical environment can drastically decrease image sharpness and resolution. If the copy stand has wheels, it can be helpful to lock the wheels or even place anti-vibration pads underneath the wheels. In future videos, we'll explore how to identify camera shake or vibration by visually inspecting images or evaluating spatial frequency response curves with software. When imaging cultural heritage material, 
it's important that the camera is parallel to the copy stand surface and therefore parallel to the object. We often refer to this relationship as camera alignment. Proper camera alignment is one component of ensuring even focus and consistent sharpness across the entire capture area. A tripod head or built-in leveling device on the copy stand can help dial in the camera alignment. In future videos, we'll walk through the methods for verifying camera to object alignment. While there are plenty of options to choose from when selecting lights for cultural heritage imaging, the guiding principles of lighting setup remain constant. In future videos, we'll dive in depth on lights, but in this video, we'll focus on lighting geometry. Lighting for cultural heritage revolves around consistency, keeping the lights at the same height, distance, and angle from the copy stand surface ensures consistent exposure and quality of light from capture to capture, day to day, week to week, and so on. If your lights are on stands, using heavy sandbags is a good idea to help prevent the lights from moving if they're accidentally bumped. More importantly, sandbags are a safety measure to prevent the stand from tipping over. If you can fix the lights directly to the copy stand to bring them off the floor, even better. When setting up lights, focus on cross-lighting. This means that the light on the right side is pointed just to the left of the center of the copy stand, and the light on the left side is pointed just to the right of the center of the copy stand. Cross-lighting avoids a center hotspot and helps create uniform illumination across the entire capture area. Set the lights up so that the faces of the lights are angled down at roughly 35 degrees. This is called the illumination angle. If the angle is too steep, the lights have to be positioned very high, which can cause reflections or hot spots on the object. If the angle is too shallow, the lights have to be positioned very low to reach the imaging surface, which creates a raking light effect. Raking light can create shadows or exaggerate the texture of the item, which may not be the intended effect. You can use an angle finder application on a cell phone to help achieve the desired illumination angle. An image quality target is an essential tool in any cultural heritage imaging workflow and a requirement if FAGI conformance is a goal. Targets come in many shapes and sizes and they are designed for digitizing either reflective material or transmissive material. Targets typically have a variety of color patches, tone scale patches, and other features that assist with the calibration of your imaging system. Some targets are used only for calibrating color and tonality, while other targets include features that enable the evaluation of all FAGI still image guideline measurement parameters. The FAGI still image guidelines measure image quality using a star rating, where four stars represent the highest possible image quality given the technology available today, and one star representing the lowest acceptable quality for cultural heritage imaging. An image of the target can be run through an image quality evaluation software, which analyzes these patches and features to report on FAGI still image conformance. During the initial setup of a digitization workstation, the target helps the user identify the proper exposure settings for the imaging system. This is done by setting exposure based on the known color values of the tone scale patches. The target can also be used to set white balance using one of the spectrally neutral gray patches. Finely detailed features on the target can be used to help achieve critical focus of the imaging device. Calibrating the device to a target each time it is used is part of a digitization program's quality assurance process and ensures consistency from project to project, day after day. There are many components of a cultural heritage imaging workstation, and each plays a specific role in determining the quality of the final image. When properly calibrated, these components work in harmony to ensure that the digital image is as faithful a representation of the physical original as possible, given the tools available. Having a basic understanding of how to set up a workstation is the first and most meaningful step toward conforming to the FAGI still image guidelines.